Hello and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore. I have stepped outside and I have instantly been attacked by the plague of phantoms, which is only typical for this world. But last time we built the Mother Alley. As you can see from here, she is carrying her alley house filled. Well, it's it's on it's stuck to an island at the moment, and it's filled with alleys ready for me to breed whenever I like. It's basically an alley breeder, and today we're gonna make use of it. But I've done a few things in between episodes. I went mining. Yes, I know it's a bit of a meme to do off-camera mining, but this wasn't actually off-camera. I just wasn't recording my microphone, and well, we found some stuff, and we gathered some stuff. So all of the mining that I did, most of it was, well, a good portion of it was underneath my base for mining for iron and lighting up the caves. And then I was also mining for copper. So we've got all of this iron in here, all of that iron too. And that should produce a lot of hoppers and pistons for us in the future. And then over here, we have all of the materials that I've gathered from yet another large copper vein in the world. And this one, it just kept going. Like, I didn't explore any of the forks. I just kept following, like, the same line, and it just kept going and going and going and going. And we ended up getting 19 of the raw copper blocks. That should tell you just how big that copper vein is. It was huge! But that wasn't all, everyone. I was exploring a mineshaft beneath my base, and I came across a few things that instantly made me regret the fact that I didn't have my microphone plugged in. Only the best and the rarest of treasures. Luckily though, I do have the coordinates of where I was. So let's just go back and we'll open those chests together like we should have done in the first place. Okay, it's just a matter of whether I can find my way back to them. Which at the moment I can't. And some zombies are falling down and getting injured. Or is it just the one? Oh. It's raining zombies! <laughs> oh! It actually is raining zombies! <laughs> Don't know what that was about, but okay. Ah, here's a mineshaft. So this might have been one of the mineshaft chests that I opened, but it wasn't the one that I'm most happy about. Got some goodies in here, though. I'm very surprised about getting glowberries down here. It must mean that the, uh... It's true that the... That the loot doesn't actually generate in mineshaft chests until you open them. Otherwise, I wouldn't be getting Globeries, because these chunks should have been generated in 1.14.2, I believe. So the fact that we have Globeries and whatnot, that's pretty cool. It might mean that we also get Armor Trims somewhere down the line. I don't know if they generate in uh, Mineshafts, though. But if they do, then that would be very cool to come across. I said I had coordinates, but I'm trying not to look at them and just find my way back to the chests, and it's not going well so far. <laughs> Oh, this was it. This was the chest that I wanted to show you all. If you look in here... Enchanted Golden Apple. Oh, we have one in episode... What is this? Episode 14. We have an Enchanted Golden Apple in the world. Oh, that's so cool. And you know what? I opened this chest and I did something... I thought I would never do when upon finding one of these things. I walked away so that we could get this thing together. Oh, that's so cool. I'm going to need to put this in the chest of memories, aren't I? We're going to name this thing. The first enchanted golden apple. There we go. That's going in the chest of memories for sure. Wow. And not only that, just over here, we have a spawner. A spider spawner. So, if I ever have need for string, I can knock out all of the torches in here. I can, I can just stand over here, and they can't actually get through this gap. So, I already have, like, a pre-built spider farm, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> you, you don't feel like they generate on their own, but in my world, clearly they do. <laughs> so, this spawner should hopefully solve my needs for string, which I am in need of a lot of given my desire for candles. I mean, 
did you see the mother alley? She needs more candles. And I have other places that I want candles in Cherryville too. We keep running out of string. So I'm very happy that we at least have this spider spawner in the world now. But that wasn't everything I found. I also found just here a diamond. And not only that, just over there, another diamond. We've got to get some of these. I am in need of diamonds. I am hungry for diamonds. I feel like I'm always hungry for diamonds in this world. So let's just try and make this all safe. There we go. Oh, we've got two. That's good. That's good. Is there more? Yes. Okay. So let's try and mine these with fortune and see how many we've got. We've got a fourth one too. Very good. Oh, there's five. There's six. Oh, I'm lucky today. How many have we got? 11 diamonds just from that vein? That's awesome. And that should allow me to repair my armor because I don't know if you knew, but my durability is running rather low on the helmet and the boots. Wow, they need a repair for sure. And then there's just this diamond over here, which I've got to be very careful of. I don't want to drop it into the lava. Is it just the one? It's just the one diamond, unfortunately. So, let's see what this gives us. One diamond? Ah, that's a shame. Ah, well, that was all I wanted to show you, though. We've gotten so much stuff in between episodes. And I am so happy for it. It's going to take us a long way, I think. Now I just need to remember how on earth I get out of this mineshaft. <laughs> it's a bit of a maze. You know, I think I've got like four or five mineshafts generating directly beneath my base. It's kind of crazy. Ah, yes, this is another way in. This canyon down here. <laughs> there we go. That canyon there. Cherryville's just there. Those mineshafts were so close. And I found a few more ores just then as well. So we're just going to go ahead and keep some of those. First things first though. We need the diamond helmet. We need the diamond boots. Because those pieces of armor. They are hurting real bad. So repair those. And repair those. There we go. And now all is well. I don't have to worry about those breaking. <laughs> Which leaves us with 10 diamonds left. Oh, I've just realized I'm going to need to find so many when we upgrade to netherite. Just to get the netherite trims, the, the upgrade templates. And then to make the armor in the first place. I'm going to need to go on a serious mining session at some point. <laughs> oh, and by the way, copper wasn't the only thing that I found when I was mining in that large copper vein. We also found an amethyst geode. And I was able to quickly get myself a stack of amethyst shards, which will be useful for breeding the alleys. Oh my goodness, look at how many stacks of copper ore I have. <laughs> 15 and a bit stacks plus 19 blocks of raw copper. I won't need to go mining for a while and I love that fact. Oh, that wasn't the only thing that I did in between episodes. I also finally hooked up two extra beehives in my villager crop farm. So now... We are getting honey bottles. At long last, we're going to get ourselves some honey. Oh boy. This villager breeder is full once again. And the villager breeder also has an enderman in it. Do these guys have enderman genes now? Is that how that works? <laughs> he even wants to get to the beds. It's literally an ender villager. But without much further ado, I'm going to take this opportunity to mine all of those ores that I gathered. I'm going to need a lot of it. For the next few episodes, I've got some farms in mind that I need for this world. Sugarcane, for example. I'm planning to build today. That's the main objective anyway. And I feel like this iron ore is going to go pretty far as well. We're going to get loads of hoppers and pistons from these. It's going to be awesome. Oh, I don't believe this. I've just used up almost my entire fortune pick. Just mining up ores. <laughs> well, I've gone all the way to four durability. I may as well take it to one. There we go. One durability. And take that off of my hotbar. Well, I'm glad I found some diamonds in this episode, or I might have been in a bit of a pinch. Oh, Fortuna. May you be repaired. Oh, wow. <laughs> just look at all of these raw materials I've got just from all of that ore that I had. Wow. All of that copper. That's going to go a long way for sure. Okay, villagers. I think your time is now. Be free! Yes, you are allowed out into the wilderness. 
And I'm I'm sorry, everyone, but uh, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and shut the gates again. Oh, if I can. Oh, oh, whoop. There we go. I wonder what they're all going to do. We have repopulated the town. I think everyone's staying in this house just here because I've got the bell at the end of it. So everyone just really loves this house in particular. Or the surviving villages from the last time we let everyone out. Why is there a farmer all the way over there? I don't know. And I believe that this is an excellent time to make use of our super smelter. I mean, what else is it here for if not for the times like now where I go out mining and I get loads of raw materials I need smelting? This is exactly what it was built for. So, let's just press that button, let it light up all the way. Unfortunately, we still lack fuel in this side of the furnace of the super smelter. So all of those materials will be going into this side, which will use up quite a lot of bamboo now that I think about it. So I'm thinking about potentially using some coal blocks in order to actually top up and get this stuff smelted. Because otherwise, this is going to take a lot of fuel. And I don't want to wait a massive time just for the super smelter to fill itself back up on this side again. Given that we haven't even managed to get to that side yet. Then we're just going to let that go ahead and smelt all of those materials up. Oh, thank goodness. I'd completely forgotten where I'd put my sniffer egg. And I was looking all over the chest room. Just looking for it. It's, it's just in the ocean stuff chest. I don't know why I put it in there. Is that because I, I got it from there? It must have been. That was not where I expected to find it. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted that sniffer egg because we're gonna grow that bad boy up. Right here. And we're gonna start gathering all of the various different seeds. In very small quantities. But I also need a way to actually gather them. So we're just gonna go ahead and put some fences down. Just the ones that I had already crafted previously. I'm gonna give the sniffer just a little bit of space to roam as well. And we'll get some gates put in there too. And we'll just shave a little bit of the ground away here. Just so that the villagers don't find themselves falling into the pen. And we're also just gonna go ahead and grab two of these alleys. Who should we go for? Who wants to come? You want to go with me. And you also want to come along. These alleys shall be my sniffer alleys. Or, that guy wants to come as well, but I don't want that one. No! The wrong allies are coming up. Hang on. I think we're just going to have to ditch the leads, I think. Where? Oh, are they both? Oh, they're both above. Okay. This... Uh-oh. Can that alley get out of that trap door, please? Oh, dear. Okay. Down there, please. No! Okay. Nope. Oop. Uh... Okay, you go down, please. There we go. We now have two alleys. Where's the other lead? There's the other lead. Okay. Come out the door, please. Thank you. Okay! And now we simply glide all the way down to Cherryville. Just a simple, graceful glide, pulling these alleys along, just in case they lose us on the way back down there. And what we're going to do with these two alleys is we're just going to hitch them up to this fence post. And these two, they're going to be gathering the seeds that the sniffer digs up. And then whenever I walk by, they should try to throw them to me. Well, that's the idea anyway. We just need that sniffer egg to hatch. So, I wanted to build a sugarcane farm in today's episode. And the design I'm going to go for is actually going to use alleys. Because when you give them a certain item, they will try to find that item and bring it straight to you. Or to a note block, if they so desire. Or if, if it plays. And I've got a friend in need and we have a sniffer! Oh yes! I should probably get out of the pen while I'm uh, <laughs> killing these phantoms. <laughs> so you give these alleys an item, and they will try to find that item and bring it to you, the player. Or, if a note block plays nearby, 
they will bring it back to the note block. And we're going to take advantage of that and give these allies sugarcane. And then they'll find all of the sugarcane that generates within the farm and they'll bring it to a specific note block to throw into a hopper. Oh, you know what? I've got to give this sniffer a name. Snoof. You are now called Snoof, sir. May you dig up many seeds within your life. But anyway, the way a sugarcane farm works is that you have to have the sugarcane on a block adjacent to, but above, water. So that's what we've got here. And I'm going to go through the reasons why I'm not using certain other farm designs and why I'm deciding to use alleys instead. So I've got some sugarcane here. We've got the pistons above and the observers above that. And then once the sugarcane grows into the observers, the observers will fire into some redstone dust just behind them, which will power the pistons and break the sugarcane. And we've got a few methods of gathering that. First thing that we could do is that we could have a water stream directly beneath the farm itself and we could have the drops just end up being fired into the water stream but as you can see just there it doesn't always get fired into the water stream and we will have some inefficiency rates we don't want to be losing our drops so we're not going to use a water stream the other thing we could do is we could have the drops be picked up by a minecart hopper and we could have that run underneath the sugarcane and it would pick up all of the sugarcane that was on there. However, I don't actually like using minecarts in farms. I feel like they get stuck underneath and then you have to crawl in there and get it moving again and it's just a bit of a pain. And I feel like there's a chunk loading issue with them sometimes. So I don't want to use a minecart to pick up the drops either. And that, everyone, is why I'm going to use alleys because alleys will not only pick up all of the drops but they won't get stuck inside the farm either they'll just be flying around and then once the observer activates the pistons beneath them i can hook up a note block to that same pulse and then that note block will have hoppers that these guys will throw sugarcane into when they hear that pulse and so yeah that's going to be my farm design for the sugarcane farm the only question is where do i put it and i think the place that I'm thinking of right now is actually building out over this river and then putting the sugarcane farm just there. So I don't want it over there. So I feel like it's going to be quite a sizable build and I don't particularly want it in the way of my future plans over here. And it also gives me a reason to come back here. I feel like I've got a nice bit of a, a square here, slowly building itself up with the way that the buildings around it. And I'd like a reason to go back here and then maybe have like some sort of scenic thing here. We'll have some paths going round too. And then I even want to have like a road going down here too. I think that would be awesome. So with all of those considerations in mind, I think that we should start that time lapse everyone and build ourselves a sugarcane farm. Let's go. And welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. We now have a completed sugarcane farm. Oh, this interior. I hope you all love it as much as I do. I really did put a lot of effort into all of the details on the walls here. I even got this little weird little tiny little cherry heart like I've got in the like I've got the cherry heart in the super smelter. 
I've got more of them, although just a lot smaller, in the walls here. I quite like that. And the sugarcane farm in question, it is working as I'd hoped. There is just one small issue. You see, these alleys, I don't really know how they're doing it, but every now and then, one of them escapes. I don't know how. Like, I think there, there must be something with the way that a piston, like, pushes and then retracts. Hang on, we're, we're going to do some science here. So, we have a piston here, and then an alley, I, I think, is maybe flying around it, and then as the piston fires, right, the alley then sort of flies in behind it, and then... Would that do it? Would would that fire, like, the alley out of alignment? Like, you saw that then. I was teleported on top of the block. That was... That was quite weird, actually. If I... If I just do... Oh, it didn't happen that time. Oh, is that because I stepped up on the trap door? It might well have been, you know. So if I do... Oh. Yeah, see? I was moving that in that direction. It's pushed me straight on top of the block. I think we've got to be careful with these alleys. So what I'm thinking of doing is actually ripping out all of the pistons there and replacing them with sticky pistons with a block in front of. And then hopefully that would remove any weird retraction physics on the alleys themselves. And they won't be able to escape anymore. Or well, that's the hope anyway. But the sugarcane farm was in fact operating for the entirety of that time lapse. So... How much have we got? Overtime. Almost a full shulker box. I've got almost five rows of sugarcane there. I'd say that's pretty good. Though I think we can safely say that the sugarcane farm does in fact work. Awesome. And yes, I did include all of the sniffer plants. We've got the torch flower. We've got the pitcher pods. And I feel like they actually fit quite well with this interior here. It does make things feel a little bit more natural. I do like that. And one idea that I am toying with is actually having villagers in here, like farming the sugarcane, or maybe farming like the tending to the flowers and the plants. Yeah, we could have employees. I think that would do pretty well. So, I've brought some composters. And what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these cherry logs beneath the pots, just like so, and replace them with composters. What that should do is hopefully invite the villagers into the structure, into the sugarcane farm, and they'll be hanging around here, and they'll be working away, they'll be looking at the plants. It'd be like I've got my own, like, farmers and gardeners just sort of tending to everything. One thing I hope they don't do, though, is I, I don't know how they interact with the, with the plants that the sniffer introduced. Like, is the... are the villagers going to come across this farmland here and then farm it? I don't know. I hope they don't touch it, honestly. But I think we're going to put three workstations in here. I think that's going to be good enough to get, like, a decent amount of villagers just sort of hanging around and looking around, looking like they're working, tending to the sugar cane. I think that would be great to see, and it would be great for the world building of Cherryville is to have actual employed villagers. I quite like that idea. This sniffer has been working overtime, though, as have these alleys. And they've given me even more crops. Wow. So, we've got 26 torch flowers going spare with 23 torch flower speeds. And 52 pitcher pod seeds as well. That's pretty good. And that's not including all of the sniffer plants that we've got in here as well. We've got all of the pitcher pods and the torch flowers. Wow. I can actually go up to the mother alley over here. And if I had some dirt, I could plant it here. But what I've done is forgotten that I need it. So let's go ahead and fix that issue, shall we? All right, then. I've got some dirt now, so we can take that out, put that in there. And I can hoe the ground. There we go. And just like this, I can plant some plants. Yeah, that would be good. Oh, hang on. That was actually grass. <laughs> so the seeds have been planted, and I will just let them grow and develop and hopefully we'll get some pretty flowers at the base of our little house here. Yeah. I hope that makes you happy, Mother Alley. <laughs> Although, maybe I have 
angered the Mother Alley, given that the the phantoms are attacking and lightning is striking. Oh dear. This moment doesn't feel as serene as it should have been. <laughs> now, eagle-eyed observers will actually notice something peculiar about the plants that I've got out the front. And these... No, they're not fake plants. They're not something I've installed into the game. They're not a mod. These are pitcher pod plants. Yes, I know that's hard to think of, but you can actually get like a, a secret sort of second plant from the sniffer if you simply put a block above the, the pitcher pod seed when you plant it, and that lets you lock in this second stage of the plant growth, because it can't grow into that too tall state. And it leaves you with this really nice sort of turnip plant, I guess. I quite like it. What do you think? But it doesn't have to be an actual physical full block. You could get the same effect simply by placing string above the flower. So if what I do here... I hoe this and plant our pitcher pods. What I can do is I can put string directly above that one and it won't be able to grow any taller than that point there, but this one will. So if I get some bone meal out, there we go. That gives us our nice, beautiful turnip plant. It's a little bit smaller, actually. I think this can grow again. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. You can just see the small beginnings of the pitcher there. But this one, on the other hand, that can just grow into its full-size state if I had more bone meal. It's fine, this is why I have a bone meal box. <laughs> so, that has now been able to grow into its full height. But this one, I can't even click the bone meal on it to grow it. It is locked in there because of the string. So there's actually, like, a secret variant of the pitcher pod that you can keep in your world. I think that's pretty cool, because I do think that Minecraft needs more plant varieties in the game. And this one just looks so good, too. I do like it. And that's not all. If you take a look over here, I actually have, like, a villager trap in these, uh, in these nice little trapdoor boxed-off sections for my sugar cane. And I didn't mean to trap villagers there, but this guy was trapped, and then this zombie walked in and trapped himself in there, converted the villager, and now they're both stuck. And the same thing is looking like it's about to happen over here. Are you aware, sir, that you might just be stuck here for life? And death? No? Oh, well, he doesn't seem too happy about that idea, but you've got yourself into that situation, and that situation is where you shall stay, sir. Or at least for now, because I'm not sure if I like the way that the villagers can get themselves stuck here. If I have employees in the sugarcane farm, for example, they could get stuck in there. I don't think I like that as an option. Yeah, I might have to put actual physical ground there so that they don't get stuck there in the future, which would mean the end of these guys. Oh, would it have to mean that? What if I moved them somewhere? Is there somewhere I can move them? I don't know. If you have any ideas for what I should do with these two, let me know. And maybe... These guys will live forever. Or live forever in death? Is is that a thing? He seems angry. He just hit me. I don't think they want to talk to me anymore. <laughs> now, you might be wondering why in that time lapse that I decided to rip down that entire back roof there and then rebuild it. Well, the thing is, when I was in the middle of the building process for this, I decided to have, like, two level roofs at the same height at the front, and then the back two would be at different heights, and it would make the, the build feel a little bit wonky and give more character to it and make things look a little bit more like, um, I don't know what I'm really trying to say there, but what it ended up being was that this roof there was a couple blocks lower than that one there, and when I looked at it, I just felt like I'd built it wrong. So I ripped out that entire roof and raised it another couple blocks to match that one there, and you might be saying, what? That's at a different height, and yeah, that, that roof is a different height to that. And that one was just a little bit lower, and it just looked really, really wrong. Didn't like it at all. <laughs> so, we fixed that before I felt like it was too set in stone. Well, basically finished building it at that point, but that's not the point. We fixed it, it's no longer an issue, and everything is right in the world. <laughs> oh, no it's not. I've got a piece of scaffolding. I can't leave that here. <laughs> Alright. 
With the official removal of that single dirt block, the build is officially complete. Awesome. And Snoof here has just been an absolute star in today's episode. Giving me all of the seeds for the pitcher pods, the torch flowers. Oh, thank you, Snoof. You're a star. Anyway, during that time lapse, we had a thunderstorm. And I've been waiting for one of those. We actually had a creeper in this box here. This was my charged creeper contraption for charging creepers. And it finally got some lightning. So, what have we got? We've got a charged boy. And this guy is going to go into the bamboo farm in the very next episode. And he's going to be dancing around and twirling and all sorts of stuff. I've got this like little bamboo sort of scene. I just want to have the charged creeper just sort of roaming around there. Just sort of like an, an out of sight almost character just sort of moving around. I would like that. I think he'll be great to have in there. I've just got to come up with a good name for him at the moment. I did give him a name, but honestly, I named him so long ago that I've forgotten what it is. So if you have any suggestions for that as well, feel free to let me know. And we'll give that creeper a good name and stick him in the bamboo farm for life where he hopefully won't escape. But you never know with these things. Sometimes they do happen. Hopefully they won't with this one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode and you love the sugarcane farm just as much as I do. I do like the fact that I've got these almost like hydroponic chambers going off the sides of this corridor. Oh, it's good. But anyway, I'll see you in the next one, everyone. Bye!